you know, using business and establishing more ownership are two of the ways that, you know, we can, you know, advance the cause for, for social justice here in the city and in the country. Um, the police departments are one of the most overt places where racism is still allowed to live. And that's not just here in GR, that's everywhere. Mm -hmm. They're kind of like the front lines uh, occupying militaristic force that has been used against people of color in, mm -hmm. in, you know, in the community. And um, that's unfortunate, you know, because black people pay taxes and we contribute to their salaries and we shouldn't if they're not going to serve and protect. Right. You know, when they go out to the suburbs and there's a thing with white kids, you know, they, they, they break it up, but they treat them with the utmost respect and with... Yeah, they scoot them along and no one's getting handcuffed on the side of the exact court or whatever it is. And they come down, they, they get one of us, put one of us over. I've been having bad experiences with, you know, with the police since I was probably like 13, 14 years old. You know, accused of stealing a bike in East Grand Rapids to being pulled over when we, you know, started driving, all that kind of stuff. So... Mm -hmm. um, but the greater issues, right, the more underlying issues are economic ones now. Yeah. You know, and, and those are a little bit more difficult to solve because if we're all running this great American race, you know, the starting line for us is, you know, kind of way after a lot of other people. But I do think that there are things that we can be doing in the black community to support one another better. I look at some of my brothers and sisters from the Latinx community, and I, I, I love the way that they pull their resources together in order to, you know, you know, buy neighborhoods and try to empower economically. Uh, even when they, you know, English is a second language for them, they're still able to overcome those barriers and, and build. Mm -hmm. um, and they could build more if they weren't, you know, enduring so much racism, you know, sure. from the, the majority and the power structures and whatnot. Uh, but I think that there are things that we can be doing as a people better that will give us even more sovereignty. I think the answer lies with us. I'm not waiting for any white guy to come down from his corporate office to come help me address what needs to go down in Southeast Grand Rapids. You know, I just, I don't think that's gonna happen and I don't, I don't believe that's the way it should happen. You know, I'm looking at us to come up with the answers. And then, you know, this, this new term, you know, your white allies, anybody who considers them self a, a conscious person and a person who cares about their community and they feel compelled, they should come down and partner with the people who have the answers. Mm -hmm. And I think we have the answers. This Full Exposure podcast episode has been made possible through the support of Metro Health, University of Michigan Health, and Dr. Peter Hahn, who believe that creativity and the arts are essential to a rich, healthy, and fulfilling life.